Tristana, Callista, and also Zaya on the table, and you, they can't take both, so you would at least get one of them and maybe force your opponent to take Zaya. But it seems like the consensus is picking Rakan first is not really what teams want to do. And this is what I love about Worlds. You have the meta evolve in front of your very eyes. Yesterday, it was all about getting an AD carry first pick, and now we're starting to see people move away from that and say, okay, we can pick a jungler and see what AD carry the enemy picks, to try and make them reveal a little bit more. Sejuani is the jungler for Fenerbahce, and now we see Hong Kong actually, wow. actually secure a very early Syndra pick here. Yeah, we've seen some mid laners be picked very early on, and like Mark Z was saying, mission in the mid lane is the man to kind of deliver here for Hong Kong attitude, and they lock in the Tristana for Unified. So two very good carries that these guys have a lot of repetitions on, but you're gonna swap over to the other side where they already have the Sejuani. Crash has only played Gragas so far this tournament, and it's been pretty much those tanky junglers for him. A bit different than the style he likes, but it's something that has been working for Fenard Bache. Now we see the Lulu and the Oriana pick up for Fenerbahce, and that's a strong mid laner for Frozen here up against Mission. That is one of our key matchups in this game. Two players that have come as building blocks of teams in the past, now trying to step up on the world stage. It is going to be God quite on that Gragas as well, so we'll see him in the game, even if Gra Crash is not the one piloting him. As we get into the second phase of picks and bans, it's a Cogmore removed from the pool by Hong Kong Attitude. Zaya still there as well for Padden if he wants it, but we have only seen him play Tristana and Cogmore thus far. Yeah, right now, if you're Fen Artabache, you go ahead and you ban away some of those Ardent Sensor supports that are left so that you have an advantage there. And then if you're Hong Kong Attitude, ban away things like the Zaya and the Kogma and make sure that they don't have one of those premier top tier AD carries. Now you're looking at Patton and going, all right, is he going to play Twitch? Is he going to play Varus, right? Those, these things are not as effective with the Lulu. The Twitch is something that we haven't seen at all this tournament, but I feel like it's still in that top tier. It's just less self-peel than some of those other cha uh, champions like Tristana. With Patton's playstyle of jumping into the enemy team, I'm not sure I want to it give him Bane help. or Twitch, in all honesty, just because he's probably likely to go quite aggressive. But it could be something like the Twitch with the Blitzcrank ban coming out from Fenerbahce. Hong Kong Attitude secured themselves the Galio, still leaving that support for last. Yeah, the Galio pick here for the top lane. Support last, and there's been two support bans already. So they're trying to see what that AD carry is, and also denying the Galio away from Thaldren because he has played it effectively. It's one of the things that he was able to play against Hong Kong Attitude last time, and it's one of the reasons they won is because that matchup where he was able to split push and pull apart the Hong Kong Attitude composition. So Hong Kong Attitude are adapting to what happened last time and making sure they don't get pulled apart with a team fighting comp like before. Maokai on the other side, top laners have switched champions from the last time these two teams played, and I'm seeing a lot of uh, one three ones, a lot of one fours Ooh. coming out from both these compositions. Sivir is the pick for Fenerbahce, works well with an ardent support, really well coming into the late game as well. Yeah, but the range on Sivir versus the range of the Tristana in the late game, if this goes long, you're looking at that big win condition for Sivir where she's got the Orianna, she's got the Lulu shields, she's gonna have to rush forward and be in range of a lot of this uh, damage that'll be coming out from Hong Kong Attitude. And I like the Alistar here because it's impossible for Sivir to get away from the Alistar because if you spell shield, you eat the headbutt, you take the pulverize, right? You can't spell shield, you have to flash when that combo comes out. Works well into the Sivir. Sometimes we see Sivir Morgana combined to try and deal with that Alistair as well, but because we already saw Japon lock in that Lulu, we know exactly what Fenerbahce are gonna bring to the table. No ardent sensor for Hong Kong attitude. It's definitely something important to note as the game goes on because Fenerbahce will have an earlier spike in that bottom lane with the Sivir and then the ardent sensor from the Lulu. Yeah, question is, can that Sivir get through the damage reduction and the stacking armor that'll come through from this Galio? That's the big question in my mind. When you're playing Sivir, you don't want to be in that 500 range for long. You want to do a lot of damage, back up, kite around, and Patton, like you said, he has only a few deaths. One of them is the one that sticks out in people's minds of jumping in, and now he's going to have to skirt team fights appropriately and be right in his range. Would you be right in the range of the si of the Syndra stun, right? Right in the range of the Alistar. So it's on Hong Kong Attitude's playmakers to catch him out. And this is the point you have to see your big members stand up. This is the time where your captain has to lead the team and say, OK, I'm taking this from the front. You have to remember, Fenerbahce have a, an emergency substitute as part of this roster. There are still questions as to how well Crash actually synergizes as part of this Turkish lineup. But up until now, they are undefeated. Hong Kong Attitude trying to give them their first loss. 
and 1907 Fenerbahce has been doing a fantastic job so far. The upset coming through, they're looking for the two-time upset here against Hong Kong Attitude. Question is, can they do it? The only team to take down a number one seed thus far. The only team to force an upset and the only team to force us into a one-two battle in a group. We've seen tiebreakers played up for that third and fourth spot, uh, second and third spot, but not for the first and second. Yeah, and right now, for a Fenerbahce, it ends up in a situation where even if they lose this, they're still in a tiebreaker. They're still in a 3-1 tiebreaker versus Hong Kong Attitude. But you want to win this so you don't have to play that and end up in the potential, like I said, number two spot because you would be playing a very good number one seed from a different region. That is always the concern. Hong Kong Attitude, on the other hand, coming in as the third seed representative from the LMS region, the first time we've seen the third seed from LMS. And a lot of people coming into the tournament said that they were better than AHQ, that they should have been the second seed, really, but they really struggled uh, to get through, didn't even make playoffs in this split, had to qualify all the way through the regional qualifier over in LMS. Well, because they made so many changes to the roster, there were four plus changes made, including coaching staff, uh, to actually get people in and out. God Quai was 80 carry, moved to jungle, found a new 80 carry, right? Top laner at the very beginning of the split, they swapped him out, right? Found this guy. And so it's been all over the place for HKA and it didn't kind of come to fruition until the very end where they got it together, just barely making their way into the regional qualifiers. Yeah, they went on a, a massive losing streak at the start of the split and then were able to reverse it about halfway through. Of course, a lot of that down to their coach Tabe, who is a previous world contender with Royal Never Give Up a few years ago. Now trying to bring HKA up to the group stages and into the first seed for those elimination matches next, well, I say next week, in a couple of days' times. So. Yeah, <laughs> literally two days. <laughs> it's not even next week as well. Today, today's Tuesday or mm -hmm. thereabouts. Crash, early jungling. He's gonna take the red buff, doesn't finish off his popcorn chickens as Atlas likes to call them, instead going straight across towards the warps. Yeah, usually you do all of your single target camps because you have the hunter's machete instead of the talisman, and that's the choice that he's made. He's just gonna go for a full top side clear, but Godquai has actually pinged this out. Is he gonna go for a scuttle grab or is it an invade here? It looks like an invade. So there's some information here that he's saying, all right, Sejuani probably hasn't done this, but Godquai doesn't have smite right now. Does Crash know that is the correct? No, question. he wouldn't know that. Crash has the Icebreaker, can get the passive on towards that blue buff, has a lot of burst. There we go, straight from 800 three, HP, though. great burst. Here's Crash as well, mission coming in from the side as Frozen, looks for the trade. Thaldrin. Down from the top side is Thaldrin, but he's already low. He roots on towards, uh, on towards Godcry, who tries Can't to get the Basco, but it's first blood for Crash, and they're going to chase onto Rivis as well. Just need a red buff to slow it down, that Galio, the flash will come out soon. One more auto attack from Crash, he could flash for it. There's the stun lock underneath the tower, the Justice Punt knocks Crash back, still a flash available for this Galio. Thaldrin Thaldrin's coming in, Galio flashes away, and HKA escape in the top lane. Yeah, Thaldrin went a different route, and that made the difference there, because if he was there when Crash got the stun, you may have forced out the uh, flash a little earlier from the Galio. But now they get to go in and ward this, this side of the map, and Godquai, big misstep there. Crash had smite, you're never gonna get this buff that he's going after here. The Sejuani's gonna do 800 damage with the passive, which does 400, plus the fact that there's an auto in there and your smite, and he's level two. I feel like maybe he was expecting it to be a Sejuani going buff to buff, and then you find him there, but the fact that he did Wolves made him hit level three off of that. But you gotta hit tab. You gotta hit tab and see how many creeps the Sejuani has, because when he has four instead of one, you have to deduce immediately, okay, this is going to give him level three. Now God quite buffless has to just go across towards his blue vision advantage for Fenerbahce as they spot him out. They know exactly his pathing early on, which stops him from being able to go down towards this bottom lane. Unified has started with the cull here in lane, accepting perhaps that they're not gonna have kill pressure on towards the Sivir and the Lulu early on. Yeah, looking to scale instead and feeling like you know, they won't be able to kill, just try to scale alongside, and there's the interaction. And here comes the stun as well from the Alistair. Padden locked up, has to flash away, but the explosive charge Another is gonna reset. land, and Unified chasing in the heal just in time, but Unified oh! can't get him, help picks with the shield, and now Unified is on the run. Padden looking for the chase, Unified still has his heal of his own, and Padden and Japone will back away for the time being, HKA winning in the bot side of the map. Yeah, there's still a heal on the side of Unified and a flash on the side of Kai Wing, so. They can make a play as soon as they shove out, and now you find this bottom lane of Patton and Japon in a really bad spot in the next few minutes. Crash has to come down towards here. This is 
what we expected to see from Fenerbahce coming into the tournament hasn't been the story of them across the last few games. Uh, Padden and Japon actually having great games, but their laning phase is sometimes a little bit weaker than yeah, some of these other teams. It's been pretty questionable. Even the game where Padden ends up 10-1-6 or 10-0-0, he's still down 20-ish CS during the laning phase and doesn't make that up for most of the game. So has had those questionable laning phases, but he isn't dying during the laning phase. But we'll see if this is where they can actually change that. Godquai on the bottom side and Crash nowhere even near. Japon is hanging out. As soon as he goes, you have to expect him to go on towards Padden. Kawing obviously still has that flash available that we talked about. <laughs> Padden's gonna get under tower before he starts his back. Isn't actually gonna get the full recall. Now that he steps up. We go. I think you're just Got done for as soon as the All-Star is And there's the knockup, there's the kill. Easy peasy, say HKA as they secure their first kill of this game. Yeah, you're done for as soon as the Alistar does headbutt. You're going to eat the pulverize because the spell shield interaction and the fact it's two spells. You don't have flash available. I feel like you're just done at that point. So Patton had to be very far back to avoid that because it would have been a flash dive as well. And it equalizes the gold as well. Crash going for a little bit of an invade, but he is on a ward. Exactly, they see him here and they see the Galio coming down as well. Mission hits level six, and now Crash, big trouble right now. Can we have a knock up onto Mission now? Rumis is there, only level four, but there's Ooh. the shockwave. Mission has to flash away. Crash keeping his summoners, unleash power onto Frozen. And Fanobache come off on the good side of that trade. They got the two summoner spells from the mid laner, and they didn't trade any of their own. So yeah, definitely a good trade for themselves. But Kaiwing gonna try to equal the summoner spells up here in mid with his Moby boots he just purchased after that back. Early Moby Boots on analysis, such a devastating thing to have to face. Crash is up towards the top side of his. Scatter the Weak comes out. Koing realizes that the Sejuani is waiting in the wings and backs away. No summoners burnt on towards Frozen. Frozen, of course, one of the stalwart performers for Fenerbahce throughout the split. He is the guy that everyone said, you need to look at this guy. He used to play for Longzhu, such a great mid lane. Hey, he is the character. Again, Thaldrin did this before. Mission's gonna get locked up. No flash knock back, but here comes the tree. And there goes Mission. And this is fantastic from Thaldrin. When he got on this Maokai in the previous game yesterday, he had such a great performance on it with the roots, the ultimate, the nature's grasp flanking mid, and then there was that fantastic play where he flanked and helped get the pentakill for Patton on the topside Baron. The Maokai for this guy, showing that he loves these tanks and he's such a great team player. Another knockup onto Patton. He is gonna get stunned up here by Kawing. He exhausts once again from Unified, Reset but jump. Patton is low. Reset jump doesn't come in, perhaps not quite got the timer on that heal because Padden would have been done for if they got underneath that town. Yeah, it felt like he didn't want to go for it there where he would take some extra shots. He would have to kill Padden just outright and make sure that he gets the reset and can jump back out. But now that he has the ultimate, just kind of banking on the next engage here. So they're pulling Crash down to the bot side. Sejuani has the ultimate here. Crash not quite going to show yet, perhaps trying to draw Unified underneath the turret first. Explosive charge used on it. Trying to force Padden back as much as possible. It's not going to be able to get too much more out of this. Fenerbahce with a slight gold lead, about 700 or so ahead at the moment. Some of that coming from the bottom lane as well, a 400 gold difference between the two AD carries. And remember, he's going to get call completed. He's got about 30 CS more to go here. So as soon as that pops, he pays off in that laning phase where they've been dominating this laning phase a bit here. 16 CS up, shoving him under turret, almost half HP on it, forcing the jungler to come down to help. Even when the jungler has his own blue up, this is one of those situations where you're very exploitable. It's not what Crash wants to be either. We've seen mm -hmm. he likes mid lane. He likes to be around Frozen, trying to set him up. Thaldrin, Crash and Frozen have been the combination that Fenerbahce have relied on throughout this tournament. And now the fact they're losing bottom, they'll lose this Infernal Drake as well as Hong Kong Attitude look to start this up and they have that mid lane priority on top of it. So this bottom side with Unified and Kaiwing saving that last pick Alistar has been coming up pretty big for them as the counter after they banned away all those 80 carries. And Patton and Japone once again struggling in lane. We said we'd expect to see it, but already being 15 or so CS behind is such a devastating dip. Oh, 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 oh. I know you guys in, in America are much more used to seeing that than we are over in EU. Uh, but yeah, Crash not quite able to connect with the Glacial Prison. We actually aren't, because nobody plays Sejuani in it. <laughs> it was actually very low presence until round playoffs. It was actually very shocking. Uh, but, yes, Sejuani, ultis, missing and going wide, forever a meme. 
Indeed. It's like, you miss one. You miss one and it happens. Like, well, I, Padden, my, my most, Padden, my most play. jumping into fights now as well is, is a little bit uh, That's of true. He's played incredibly well. It only has to happen tournament. once, yeah. seriously. Like, I, my most played champion says Juani by a good margin, and you can be a god all game, but you miss one of them. And you're Smithy. It's because it's so obvious as well. Sometimes with these big ultimates, it, it's a bit like missing a Varus ultimate, you know? It's so obvious when you've missed it that it can uh, cost you a little bit of respect amongst your team members. But at the moment, both teams respecting their opposition. A thousand gold lead for Fenerbahce as they continue to get slight advantages across the map. But still, that bottom lane is in favor of Unified. Yes. The bottom lane is where I really had to look here, too, because Infernal Drake is what came out of that. The fact that they are really going to put pressure on Patton. And remember, this does not just happen during the laning phase. That Alistar will be able to get the better of the Sivir almost every time he's able to get on him with a headbutt. And it's something you have to watch out for. But Japone, we, we've seen some Lulus use the, the ultimate the wild growth to actually stop the Alistar from arriving. So we're gonna have to be fast on those as the lanes get swapped here. Pretty sure we saw Japone doing that yesterday when Padden mm -hmm. was playing the Cogmore. Unified and Kaiwing do come up towards this top side. It's something we often see around this point because you're looking to try and take that tower down as quickly as possible. Yeah, and now they're trying to swap it. And that was a TP from the Galio to the bottom side here. So we got to push that wave out. And now Maokyle back. And now they're going to swap it. He's probably going to have to TP to the bottom side. And Ruiz just pushing this in. It's going to be a couple of waves lost unless Thordrin does teleport down here. He's running on his way there now. So perhaps just accepting that 12 CS missing that he will have. They're trying to fight. You have the ultimate here. Sejuani's over on the side. I feel like if you pop that, yeah, they're trying to go. But Sejuani's going to be late. Unified. He's going to jump away. There's the exhaust as well. Japone not quite able to get the chase in. Wild Goat's been used. God quite on the flank now. Is he going to try and engage? But Crash has caught him out. We'll be able to get the stun up in just a second. And Paddy's second stun. On his way. Second stun doesn't quite connect with the Glacial Prism as Godquai is able to dodge away. Now Unified was backing, but he realizes he doesn't want to be in a crash Ooh. as the knock up from Sejuani. He's going to be able to get away. Uh, with the flash of his own. Frozen still on a flank here off towards the bottom side of this fight. But you see Frozen, like you said, came up top. This will give them priority on the top side of the map. They'll lose maybe some mid lane turret damage, but this is in danger of going down here. I like the fact that he smites the cannon minion. He's going to try to clear this out and let the Tristana reset. Now the next minion wave is here, and it'll be on the turret for just a little bit before the Tristana arrives. Half HP, though, that's the question. Can they actually chunk this down and kill it? Nope, just gonna back. They're not risking it. They feel like the Tristana is gonna be there in just a second, and they'll spot her on that ward. Japone not quite at that ardent sensor yet either. It's such a big power spike for the support, but he isn't able to get it. Mission. Oh, he's stuck on a wall. Just gonna there you go. There's the shockwave. Comes back. Frozen does get some aggression down onto Mission here. Does have the flash as well if he wants to jump in. Seen that happen a few times. Mission with the cleanse wouldn't be able to keep himself alive through that trade. And man, Unified just gets so much damage on these turrets every time. Even though they start losing those fights, the lane swap is giving them so much tempo that they win it here. And now there's a TP on the backside. Thaldrin trying to make a play. There's the Nature's Grasp. You know the Galio doesn't have TP, and he's on the bot side of the map looking for the turret. The knockback from the Alistair takes the route as well. Stops Unified from being caught up. Here's Godquai. Crash jumping in from the side. Kuing with the flash away, and now Crash isn't able to connect. Fenerbahce still unable to find the fight they want. But now, Hong Kong Attitude got that first turret. They're going to get this bottom turret on top of it. And now they're just going to lose their top. That's it. They're going to get two turrets and first turret gold for just a single one. HKA with that second turret. As you say, Fenerbahce will be able to get one of their own. The next Drake is a cloud not as important to fight over. I wonder if Fenerbahce look towards the Rift Held here because they know still that that Galio doesn't have the teleport. Doesn't look like that's what they're going to do as pad and backs on a ward. He doesn't know there's a ward there, so might be caught out, but I don't think anything too serious is gonna happen to that civet. Yeah, there's just pings onto the Rift Herald to check it with both the jungler and the support. And they see that nothing fishy's going on. They'll get control of the area. And now it's time to fight over mid lane. Who can get this mid lane turret? Turrets are gonna be two to one. And you have to answer this Tristana, and you have to run all around. And this is kind of that part of League of Legends that's so hard to translate to solo queue. Uh, because before it used to be, before the uh, changes to turrets and lane swaps, it used to be hard for people to understand, oh, th this is why you lane swap, and this is why you do this here. But when the map gets open like this, it's like, why aren't they all mid? Why aren't they all like looking for that bottom turret? And it's very difficult to actually uh, you know, translate this to your normal games. But what's going on is they're just trying to get pressure 
based on, hey, I pushed this out for 30 seconds. Now, your Tristanic and Alistar get to make a play mid, they get to get some objectives, they get wards down, and then maybe they have to go back top and CS the wave, right? And it just ends up being something where it doesn't feel like you're doing much impactful, but you're just trying to keep the current state of the game in Thaldrin. That was, that was stylish. Yeah, it was pretty sly there as he jumps underneath the Justice Punch. Is that uh, like a boxer, sting like a butterfly, float like a Galio. As uh, the Mokai is able to dodge around. The Rift Herald has been started from HKA. Superb vision control around that. Three control wards in the river for them. And it's one of those areas that you think they shouldn't have had control of because they were pushed to their tier two top just before that. But the fact that people got chunked out and they weren't able to actually, weren't able to actually uh, push that area themselves, there would be control wards everywhere. And Fenabache did not go for the Rift Herald. I think something else that's hard to sort of quantify at times, Zyrene, is the playing around item spikes, playing around like mm -hmm. waiting for the Ardent Sensor. So that's probably what these teams are doing at this point. You know, you've almost got an Infinity Edge on Unified, you've almost got an Essence Reaver on Pattern, you've just finished an Ardent Sensor on Japan. You're saying, okay, in 30 seconds to a minute, we'll be a much stronger team than we are at the moment. Yeah, and just looking at gold differences, we see that the gold is even pretty much at the top, but a thousand gold on Unified over the Sivir. So you talk about the item spikes when they come through relative to your opponent. That's a great time to fight. This Cloud Drake may just be something that they don't get until it's like, okay, we have this advantage. I got Infinity Edge. He's obviously just going to be on Essence Reaper in parts. So it's time to fight. It's very reminiscent of the game yesterday between these two teams. Pretty slow to start off. HKA taking an early advantage and then Fenerbahce at the end were able to win a couple of fights. Got a couple of Baron Steals, which definitely helps you out as well. Crash and Frozen being able to secure that objective. I'd like to see that happen once again. Yeah, they're just trying to muscle down the top lane here, but that'll be not the Cloud Drake. They're going to try to go mid. It's a flank here. Alistar on the opposite side. Good flash from Frozen to avoid the knockup. He will be able to escape. They Rift Herald as well here, so this is going to be that mid turret going down. Much better turret take than that tier two top, unless you're going to continue to push. Is this a flank? Is this a collapse? Fenerbahce are all coming down. Four, a three member is going to join Thaldrin, not with a TP yet. So it's going to be a 3v4 for the time being. Galio's on his way. Of course, that's the hero's entrance to join. And now we're going to see Pattern have to dodge around the side of this fight. The knockup onto Crash. God quite looking for the stun as well. Spirit comes in. They just jump away. And actually, Fenerbahce are able to escape from a fight that HKA would have loved to take. Yeah, Crash didn't get knocked back there by God Quai's barrel. Looked like his. Model was really big from the wild growth, but it just went a little bit in front of him and it didn't actually make contact with his hitbox. And it was almost a massive fight between the two uh -huh. teams. You looked as HKA, you were saying, yeah, we're collapsing on them. There's only three of them here. You've got no TP on Thaldrin, so he's going to take a while to join as well. But then Abache were able to while their way around the edges. Our Turkish representatives doing a great job of keeping themselves alive. Yeah, the TCL champions actually avoided a pretty bad situation there because as soon as the, the Gragas gets onto the uh, the Sivir, you can start having that Galio ulti come through. You can start having this trickle in happen and just keep her there. That range is going to be a big issue moving into the later parts of this game where she's just outranged by a lot of the abilities on Hong Kong Attitude as well as the Tristana as she levels up. There is the Infinity Edge finished mm -hmm. on towards Unified. There is an Essence Reaper on the other side alongside the Ardent Sensor. That will make up some of that gold disparity between the two. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Morello Nomicon on mission. He's about to go back. There's a needlessly large rod bonus on towards Frozen. And mission has gone blasting wand and amplifying tome to back up that Morello Nomicon. Looking for Void Staff as his second item to just try and burst. Some go for Leandris. This may be, you know, possibly a Leandris, since both those actually build into it eventually. But I feel like this might be Void Staff since he's up against an Abyssal Mask very early on in the game. And something we're seeing mid laners do more and more, especially with Merc Treads around as well. The voice stuff does just give you that little bit of extra penetration. Uh, Fenerbahce now trying to see if they can step into the enemy jungle. We haven't seen as much from Crash in terms of pre-20 minute aggression as we usually do from him as a player. And I think we might have to sort of change our expectations of Crash as a jungler at this tournament because throughout the entirety of planes, he has been a bit more passive, maybe, maybe looking for one or two mid lane ganks early on. Now remember, jungling is always a team thing. It's a team effort. Uh, and a Crash understands that instead of just walking blindly into the jungle and being caught out, make sure that people are communicating. And that's kind of the, the weak part here for FB is the fact that emergency substitution and the fact that the team been communicating in English from what we've heard. And Crash you know, is still struggling to have Frozen kind of translate for him and make sure that they are all on the same page. So it's not as not as clean, not as 
easy in terms of the flow. But you switch them onto junglers who uh, have easier abilities to, to combine in a team fight. Glacial Prism, Explosive Cast. And I would say ones that don't have to be early in their, aggress in, in their aggression, right? If you're playing something like Kane or you're playing something like Rek'Sai, you definitely have to communicate with your team because your biggest power spikes over the enemy jungler are early in the game, and then you have to kind of scale and try to be ahead of them. So you really rely on what your team is doing, and they have to give you resources, whereas these junglers can really give resources away. They can show up in the lane, help push a wave out. They don't care if they lose their top side of the jungle, right? You just keep doing things like that. We're starting to get towards the uh, point in the game as well where team fights become a paramount part of the game. I'm looking at Rivis because we said it would be difficult for Padden to deal with him on this civet. Hasn't built too much armor yet on towards that Galio, so I'm still expecting Padden with those ricochets to be able to shred through the Galio. Yeah, the Galio, mostly it's that W holding it down. It's so long in terms of the duration for what you can uh, just negate in terms of damage too. And also when you buy magic resistance like he is, it adds the more bonus damage reduction. So he is technically getting even tankier with his W against Padded, and it just becomes very frustrating to deal with, especially when you buy something like a Bramble Vest, which I assume he'll pick up because there is a Lulu with an Ardent Sensor on the side. Reduce that healing as much as possible. Crash also has the Warmogs, which uh, makes him incredibly tanky in the jungle. It's slowed down a little bit here, as I mean. Mm -hmm. Before we said they could play around Cloud, they could play around these item spikes. Now the teams have started to pick these up. Where's the game going from here? Where, what are the plans for these two teams? Uh, Baron, I think, is the next plan. But right here, Thaldrin is just smacking back and forth with this guy. And the Syndra was on her way. And now she's going towards that red buff. So right now, it's mostly that Baron. It's just the Baron dance and control. You try to hit power spikes, flex around this area, get yourself some wards down, and once somebody has control of the area and can maybe bait a fight, then it becomes much more um, reliable to start getting an advantage in the game. Because these outer turrets are almost all gone. It's that bottom one that Thaldrin's looking at, and then that mid one here is the big one that I feel like is stopping FB from pushing up. Because once you get that mid one down, it gives you so much control of the enemy jungle in their camps. I think the problem for Fenerbahce trying to get that bottom tower is that Thaldrin's bark is just a little bit worse than his bite at the moment on that Maokai, unable to really trade too effectively into the Galio. Another thing that I think is going to be important in this game, uh, aside from that, is the levels of the AD carries. Unified is getting funneled farm in the side lane constantly, and because there's two turrets down on the top side, those minion waves will keep pushing in and eventually hit that tier two, maybe the inhibitor turret, and then he gets to push it out. And he's level 12. Remember, Tristana benefits very highly from having levels because of her passive that increases the range of her auto attacks, whereas you can see Patton here still struggling almost at that level 11 here. He's also been splitting uh, experience a little bit more with Japone, where Kai Wing is still on that roaming duty. So is this the point at which you force a fight if you're HK? You say we've got an AD carry who's got a two-level advantage, an item advantage. He's finished Static Shiv, whereas Padden has yet to finish his second item. You've got a Void Staff on mission already completed. Is this where you really want to take the game by the scruff of the neck? I don't think you... When you're looking for a fight in this type of situation with setting up objectives, I don't feel like you're, like, quote-unquote, looking for a fight. You're looking to put the enemy team in a disadvantageous pos uh, position take control of the Baron area, and if they fight you, then you have a, you have a uh, kind of a higher percentage chance of winning it because of your items. And if they don't fight you, you got Baron. So they're just trying to put themselves in those positions. And yeah, you can see it's a very distinct two-level advantage where Unified hit level 13 on the same wave that Padden hit level 11. It's a numbers game. It's a percentage game. It's well, our, our chances of winning this fight are 70% instead mm -hmm. of 60% or 50%. And that's what HK want to play around, especially since winning this game secures them that tiebreaker match against Fenerbahce later on. The winner of this uh, is looking for that first seed in the group. And this is the awkward thing right here. Thaldrin is being aggressive, but this is Unified showing up out of nowhere. And Thaldrin is going to get shredded down by that Tristana. Great knockback. Rivis with the chase with the Righteous Glory gets the slow down, and eventually HKA will take the fight. Fenerbahce trying to answer with a Baron on the other side of the map, but they are missing their tank. Exactly, and this is one of those plays that is so hard to predict. Unified has just been picking up solo lane farm. You expect him to keep trading. Breaks the pattern, goes bottom as Thaldrin's been so aggressive, and now they're looking for more. Frozen's going to have to flash. And then HKA can just look up towards that Baron as well. Unified is actually still on the other side of the map to the rest of the HKA members. There is a Cloud Drake coming up in about 10 seconds as well, so he might look to secure that himself, jumping into Japone instead, who has to whimsy his way away. Keeps the ward up. That's the important thing. His support will thank him. 
Don't have to place another ward. Keeps the ward up, keeps control of that bottom side of the map. But at the same time, same time, Hong Kong Attitude still have control of the Baron Pit simultaneously. And now Unified will take this Cloud Drake. And that will be three Drakes for Hong Kong Attitude, who, despite the goal being pretty even, have an advantage in terms of map pressure with that mid turret being down. And also just have a, a more fed AD carry and more Drakes. And it's important to remember the reason that Novace were able to come back against HK yesterday and win was that they got two Baron steals. Not one, but two. It took them so much to be able to actually eke out a win against this HKA, HKA lineup. And there's a reason HKA come into the group as the first seed. Because they are expected to win this match. Because they are expected to be better than Fenerbahce, who have put up a very good performance thus far in players. And it's expected, but they got that upset. And so now expectation is that that happens again. But like you said, it was pretty much on a low probability play of two Baron steals. So if you replay those situations over and over again, we're talking about percentages, does it happen more often in favor of Hong Kong attitude? But right now, it just seems like it's even again. So they're trying to throw kind of wrenches in there and Unified is that wrench. Stun onto Crash, here come the rest of the HKA members. Godfight with the knockback and that's a dead jungler. And now HKA can look for the Baron. And they're just not expecting Unified to show up in these places with that much damage at this point in the game. He's at that 10 CS per minute mark. He has those two items that he really needs and almost completed the other one. And the call paid off in spades for him. So now on a Baron here, the steal chance is much lower, but remember, Frozen stole it on Syndra. That we'll see. Look, looking for the steal on Oriana as well. God, quite no flash, no explosive cast, down to 4,000 HP. Fenerbahce Baldrin going in. Here comes Baldrin in from the back line. Nature's Grasp used as well. Frozen. Tristana. Up. Tristana so low, but managing to survive already. The Oriana is dead. HKA lose one for one in this trade. Kai Wing low as well. Fenerbahce turning it around, and Rivis is going to fall as well because Padden is still alive, Zyrene. And Padden is padding that KDA. KDA. Rivis with the shield of Duran will lock them up for the time being, but once again, HKA unable Out. to play around the Baron. Rivis escapes, but HKA lose the fight in the pit. They lost Crash earlier. They lose Frozen there. A two for two. We're back at even. And now they're going to start this up. The jungler is about to walk in. TP mid from this Galio. Super cheeky from Japone as well to use the blast cone to knock God quite away. But now Japone in trouble. Unified looking for him. Unified has the red buff. Here's Thordrin, Padden and Crash in the pit. God quite off towards the side as well. Has got that ability to steal. Oh, the crits. Though. Unified caught out though as Crash jumps onto him already. They've killed the AD carry and where's the damage? But the other AD carry is down. Now the Lulu's dead as well. 2 for 1 in favor of HKA and they will back away for now as they win a trade in the river. The Baron is just a death sentence. It's all about that fighting. I take back what I said before. The Baron is all about fighting. Every team in this game is just going to contest it regardless who's starting it up in numbers advantage. These AD carries getting those crits with their items, it's going to happen more, more likely than not because they're above 50% now. But it just gets pretty disgusting. Unified's position here. Thaldrin from the side. Brilliant here. Again, he gets knocked up by the tentacle. The tentacle smash stopped Unified from repositioning there with his flash, with his rocket jump. He wasn't watching his feet. That happened so often. And it forces him out of the fight as well. That final ricochet taking him down to about 100 HP. And then we see Fenerbahce able to catch out Rivis. He does jump away at the end, making sure all the CC's down before he uses that hero's entrance. Fenerbahce start up the Baron looking for it themselves. And then he gets out the grand the hero's entrance, not to be confused with the grand entrance. And then after that, Fenerbahce with the Baron were unable to take it because of the TP coming back in from that Gallo. <laughs> he was then able to distract them and make sure that Fenerbahce weren't able to take a stranglehold on this game. And there were some pretty disgusting crits too from Unified onto Patton. And then it just ended up being this big crit that took him to half HP. He gets taunted and he's flailing in that position. But now you're looking at Unified as a level 15 Tristana to level 13 of Patton. Unified is the same level as an AD carry as Fenerbahce's top laner. That's impressive when you can get that sort of uh, extra experience on your AD carry. And you look across the rest of it and it's pretty even. A level advantage for Crash over Godquai. Japan has one level over Kai Wing. And that's where those extra mm -hmm. levels have come for the Tristana, well, putting the Trist him into the sideline. And this is always something where people will ask, well, why don't you just do the same thing with your AD carry? Tristana is not the same AD carry. She's so safe. If you put a Twitch in the side lane, he's going to have to sneak about and be really clever about this. But 
Whereas Tristana, you can push past the halfway point because you're so confident in rocket jump and buster shot. You have two forms of getting away and self-healing, whereas Sivir would have to pop ultimate and run. It's a long cooldown. And then there's so many gap closers. We see, like, why would a Kog'Maw go up there by himself, oh, yeah. right? I've said, don't do this at home unless you're Tristana, and that's why she's got such a high priority on her, too, is she can do these types of things. And it helps you get these extra items, this extra farm as well. Three items completed on towards the Tristana. God quite not quite able to connect onto Crash as Kaiwen goes in. And they're just trying to force Crash away. It's a vision game. This is exactly what we saw yesterday as well. Vision around the Baron, so paramount for these two lineups. Vision and getting that farm. See Unified hitting that level 16 here. Has a lot of CS right now. Still at that 10 per minute mark or slightly above it. He's looking for, for camps. Goes for the red buff here. On the bottom side, they're just picking up farm back and forth. Mid lane has farmed up as well. Both of them sitting just over that mm -hmm. 10 CS a minute mark. And you see a Rabidon's Death Cap, a Boy's Staff on towards a mission. And Frozen on the other hand, haven't yet, you've yet seen him really hit a Shockwave and yet to show up at players. Yeah, that's very true. Frozen hasn't had that huge amount of damage just yet, but he is at that Orianna three item spike. I really like this when you have that Void Staff after you have the Luden Zeko and uh, Morello Namicon. I like the Void Staff though a lot. That's the big one is that that's where you really start getting those big, massive, juicy shockwaves on these carries. And interesting, Unified actually thought he was gonna go for maybe QSS so he could get out of the CC, but he goes for the armor penetration here of the last Whisper to go up against the Sejuani with her single item, with the uh, Maokai with his item. And that's about it in terms of what he's penetrating, in terms of bonus armor. There isn't a whole lot, but if he's only hitting those tanks, then it's worth it. Maybe just trusting the fact that he can position around the edge of these fights. Seen him play Zaya a couple of times this tournament and played it incredibly well. In good positioning, Trist just as safe as the Zaya. Fenerbahce once again pushing forward to see if they can get some vision control around this Baron. HKA could look for their third Cloud Drake of the game if they wanted it. No dragons yet for Fenerbahce. Kaiwing has a flank possibility here, but yeah. doesn't quite go all the way in. Just going for wards, and I'm watching Thaldrin. This guy has been huge in these fights. His setup, his approach with his nature's grasp is really what makes it so that uh, FB can get off on the right foot and it takes Hong Kong Attitude by surprise. Now, though, this is the third Cloud Drake that's going to go over to Hong Kong Attitude. Three Cloud Drakes and an Inferno. That's a fiery tornado indeed. And HK will be trying to rain down the pain from long range with this unified Tristana. So close in this game. 500 gold the difference at the 32-minute mark. Yeah, it's been a slow game, but at the same time, there's been kind of a, just a game of chess where the teams, I think the, the most clever thing I've seen so far is Unified going bottom, kind of making the difference and getting a kill, and then allowing them to start up bear. And it's really been, hey, where's this Tristana going? And it's kind of that lane allocation game that HKA got a leg up on, but it seems like FB are just not gonna fall for the same thing twice. But I mean, Triple Cloud Drake is not to be underestimated. It is a lot of movement speed that starts flowing your way. You end up getting plus 75 flat movement speed. Of course, when you go over the soft caps, it gets reduced, but you end up moving around just faster. You get to the minion wave faster after backing. Crash invading just to try and get the razor beats here. Knocked back with the explosive in. Knock up from a Kawhi. Here it comes unified as well. But Crash is able to escape. God quite stunned up as well. And that's two ultis. Two ultis used, no ultimate yet uh, used on the side. Oh, sorry, just the explosive cask from HKA. Yeah, it's two for one in ultis. Uh, right to floor, you're not moving towards anybody. <laughs> so yeah, Thaldred's got a flash there. Just hoping that there was a, a twitch or something hiding <laughs> in the bottom side of the jungle. Something, give me something. But nothing there for the Righteous Glory. And does that just give HKA the impetus to, to pressure more around this Baron? They clear out wards once again. Haven't really been able to see either team break through turrets in a long time. Fenerbahce only having those two in the top lane throughout mm -hmm. the entire game. HKA clearing the first tier of towers for themselves. Crash once again stepping in. This is something we've seen him do a few times. He is that front line. He, he is the tank for the team. He's the one who's safest to yep. push forward with. And with Sejuani, you get to do that because of your passive, just doubling your resists and giving you some extra ones on top of it. So your first few cooldowns that are used on you from the brush, you can't really be burst out. You have to wait those few extra seconds. And if she's CC'd for that long, then she's probably anybody else would have been dead in that situation. Thordrin and Rivis say hello in the jungle. And uh, Thordrin, a little bit of a love tap there.
says, okay, you can, you can go that way for the time being. HKA now setting up towards this Baron. They have relatively good control of the vision around they it. They do it pretty a... quickly with the Tristana crits. The knock up again. Oh, man. Crash coming in from the side. God quite is going to be able to get away. Kaiwing down to half. There was a ward just towards the bottom side of this river that spotted them out. I think perhaps HKA thought there was a a window of vision lack there from Fenerbahce, but they were still in awareness of that yeah. Baron going down. I feel like this Baron is a bit of a Fenerbahce fan. Like, he's just like, man, 1907 was a great year. Let's go. Let's go. He's been around that long, I assume. But the two knockups have been actually really random. There's, I don't think there's any way to really control that. You just know in terms of the pattern where, you know, he'll do like the line and then he'll go for the knockup. Those types of things. You know which ability the Baron will cast, but they're not watching their feet. And he's putting it right on the AD carry both times. He's got it out for Unified. Impressive patience in these two teams as well, though. So, I mean, we've for the last 10 minutes or so, it's been all around just gaining vision around this Baron. And this is a game that, that could decide the first seed. If Fenerbahce win, they secure first. They secure uh, a spot not against Fnatic or Cloud9 you know, or Team WE. A much easier road, perhaps, to the group stages. And both of them are showing a, a greater deal of mental fortitude, not just trying to pull the trigger uh, aggressively in these fights. Yeah, and right now, Unified getting himself that Mortal Reminder, which is what we wanted to see, something like a Bramble Vest or Mortal Reminder really early on. Riri's finally got his in terms of the Thorn Mail. And so that'll stop the Maokai from healing a whole bunch. It'll stop the Sivir from healing off the Warlords and also the Ardent Sensor a bit. And he's almost full build here on Unified, whereas still a bit to go for Patton. That's three three and a half items or so on Patton at the moment, perhaps just lacking a little bit of that extra gold. But an interesting point now is that as we get towards these six item positions for a lot of these members, you start to see control wards fall off a little bit more. You have to kind of have dedicated members of your team who just say, okay, I'm gonna keep a slot free so I can get three control wards every back. Yeah, for example, in that top lane, Thaldrin, he's got two control wards, but that means he's down pretty much an entire 1300 gold in the inventory that he could have. The Spectre's Cowl. Just making sure that the vision comes first and being a team player there. And he has always been a team player. He's the captain of this team. He is a veteran of many a competition, and he is looking to guide his team to another upset oh. in this group. So, interesting. Baldrin was clearing, and Riris went and did the Krugs, and then he went and he's proxying the wave. So Thaldrin's like, what are you doing? Looks like he's trying to free himself up to roam. Shockwave hits on submission. Crash was knocked back. Unified's going to open up. Oh, the Lulu! On a gun. Japone is low. The Unleashed Power takes him out. And now Mission's got the first kill. Crash jumped on by Unified. This is going to be a jungler down as Padden tries to see if he can ricochet some boomerangs around, but not going to have the damage. Yeah, and it just looked like the damage just completely wasn't there just yet on the side of Fenerbahce, whereas Hong Kong Attitude, they're going to start this up. And it looks like they're just going to trade mid turret for Baron here. They don't want to contest this. Pretty different than the way the last few fights are going. And these guys are low, too. They won't quite even get the mid tower for it. For it. Galio has the flank here. Rivis looking to see if he can catch out Padden. We'll meet him in the river, but not going to be able to get too much more out of that. Elder Dragon's up in 12 seconds here. Still Japone and Crash are dead. HKA could turn and get double buffs and really open up this game. It's like the worst time to get caught out. The Baron buff gets taken, and then they have enough time to run over to the Elder Dragon right as it spawns. Thaldrin doesn't have much mana. It's not going to be very useful if this fight does break out. I feel like you give this over, and then you're looking at a Baron buff. Four elemental stacked Drake Elder Dragon for Hong Kong Attitude. That's pretty darn devastating. This Cloud Drake's buffing up. You've got an Infernal in the mix as well. And let's have a look at how this all started off. Yeah, Sivir's in the mid lane. That's why they go for this, because the Sivir is there. The ultimate from the Orianna comes out and only hits mission, but it's not enough. And then this big combo comes through, and that gets the flash as well as the wild growth out of Japan. So we can't really save anybody. And now the Sivir comes through with the ultimate, and you want to be able to have her in the fight. She's that big difference maker. AD carries become so damn important when they have a lot of that CS and when they have all those items stacking up, their uptime is of the utmost importance in these fights. And people might not realize just how devastating a four stack elemental dragon is. You're getting an extra 225 true damage. It ticks over a couple of seconds, but that is so devastating for every attack you land on an enemy opponent, or on a tower, you're just totally chunking through them. And now with a 4,000 gold lead, HKA can look to break this second tier of towers, probably to break at least one inhibitor off this push as well. Yeah, the fun stuff too, remember, they also 
gives you 50% more of the effects you already have from dragons. So they're running around the map very fast. They're running around with this Baron buff, and then they have all this extra damage if a fight breaks out. So right now, FB just kind of had to go, okay, sir, what do you want to take? All right, you know, that's fine. Have all of our turrets, that's cool. And then they have to fight afterwards. But the good news is we're approaching six items anyway, so the gold difference won't mean as much once it's all said and done. HK taking a tower in the top and in the mid. We'll look to those inhibitor towers soon as well. Still got a bit of time remaining on that Elder Drake. A shorter buff duration than the Baron will be expiring just before it. Rivis is down towards this bottom side and Thaldrin will struggle to deal with him now with that Elder Drake buff, but can just try and clear out the wave on this Malka. Yeah, Malkai just healing so much. You don't have to hit the, uh, the Galio and apply Grievous Wounds on yourself. Just stand there, take the wave, Keep doing this. Try to save that turret. You can see 50 seconds left on this Baron that was taken. And then around that time, you'll see the Elder Dragon fall off as well, to be honest. HK unable to break the bait. And that will be good news for Fenerbahce fans in the audience. Soldier trading onto Rivis, but not going to be able to get too much more out of that. HKA do get a good Baron buff. That's exactly what they needed to open up this game a little bit more. But perhaps not quite enough hmm. to actually secure themselves the win and that tiebreaker match. Yeah, so what this Baron buff has allowed them to do so far, if they don't break that base in the mid lane, is get all those outer turrets down. This will allow them to take the next Baron, the next Elder Dragon easier, because you don't have as much control if you're Fenerbahce. But it doesn't allow them to really push for the win just yet. It doesn't allow them to have much to leverage there. It's just these vi this vision. And it's kind of a, a position that when the gold is even, being the defender isn't that bad, right? I know it's going to sound really strange, but you have less to walk between both lanes when it's at the 3 fourths point towards your lane. You can walk between and rotate a little bit faster. You just have a small area to cover, right? You don't want to have to cover something that's like a tier one tower all the way out there, right? Condense everything, pull your forces back into just this base, and just play around objective timings. Especially against something like a Galio that can move a lot quicker between lanes. If you can run across with the Maokai and get your nature's grasp off sooner, you kind of mitigate the ability of a Galio to, to jump around. HKA do get 6,000 gold off that Baron, put themselves about 6,500 gold in the lead at the moment. But the later you get into the game, the more people yeah. are at that six item spike, the less having that extra gold matters. It's going to sound really strange, right? But the fact that Hong Kong Attitude weren't able to crack an inhibitor is very big because now it's going to come down once again to team fights. That's pretty much how this game is going to be uh, answered. And that's why I'm not saying anything like Hong Kong Attitude, like fantastic lead, fantastic bear, anything like that. Now, it sounds a little bit strange that I'm not doing that, but it's mostly because this is literally just going to come down to the next few team fights here. There's pretty much only a small item disparity between everybody on the, in the game, like a half item uh, between, I think that's kind of what it is right now between everybody. Yeah, it's pretty much half items at this point. So it does just come down to that execution. It comes down to that team fight. We are in the late game. And what Hong Kong Attitude have gotten themselves is access to the next Elder or the next Baron, which is once again in a few minutes. The last time we saw these two teams face up against each other, it came down to a point this. And actually, HKA able to break the inhibitor tower. Crash was up in the top lane, unable to react. Thaldrin down towards that bottom side. If they can take this inhibitor, perhaps that can spell the game for them. But Thaldrin's looking for the flank. Galio on his way, knocks in with the hero's entrance, knocks up. Crash the knock back with the cast. And now we're going to see a lot of damage coming out from Unified, who is still alive on the back of this fight. HKA stepping forward, looking for the inhibitor. Just need to crack this base. Just need to take this single inhibitor in the middle lane to really open up the game and help them take down Fenerbahce. Oh, Mission just trying to look to pop Patton. Oh, man. If he had ultied there, that may have actually been it because there was no wild growth. He probably would have had to heal. Whew. I feel like Mission is going to... It's been so long since people have damage checked each other. It's like, oh, I just did that. I, I Okay, next time I know. And something else to check is the fact that Unified has now gone six items straight there you go. Bloodthirst has finished up. No Zerka Greaves for him as all. Who needs boots when you are standing at the back of the fight? And that's something I want to comment on as well. HK are doing a really good job of keeping their carries alive at the back putting up a meat shield front line and allowing Unified a mission to spread out around the back and find their target. And now HKA are in a much better position. They have that Baron, or they have that Baron coming up in 40 seconds. They have that six item, which is a distinct advantage over what the uh, Sivir has. And we just saw in that last fight, they just have a lot more damage and tankiness. 
Shield of Dread is going to taunt up Thorgen. He's trying to run away. Here come the rest of Fenerbahce. They're trying to catch him out. Unified does have the flash. They're looking instead for Rimis. The Shockwave comes down. Rimis with the Shield of Dread gets another taunt. Damage reduction. He's going to knock them back. The Nature's Graph stuns him up. There's the root as well. Kai Wing seeing if he can get a flank off. But HKA needs to just back away as Rimis goes down. And this is 15 seconds on that Baron. And you can see Crash is taking care of the mid lane wave right now. There's 50 seconds for FB to go up there, try to actually get that Baron before Reverse is actually involved in it. But you do have to watch out for the disadvantage in terms of ultimates here for Fenerbahce. Crash has struggled to be with the team at times this game. He's been that front line, got caught out a couple of times, one of them leading to HKA, getting that original Baron. And now he's the one that steps up. He wasn't involved in that last play, but he needs to be involved now. It's a Baron fight. It's a Baron dance here, Zyrene. They're just trying to rush it. They only have 20 seconds before that Galio is back up with TP. And they don't have the ultimates just yet. You can see Shockwave back up. Now, Thaldrin is about to have his ulti. They're going for a 50-50. This is just like the last time. Fenerbahce won it the last time. They're looking to win it once again and take the game against HKA. The Tristana's Hong going Kong mid. They aren't attitude. actually committing to this. Tristana's not there, but the steal from Mission across the walls. I mean, he gets it. Fenerbahce looking for the fight, but Unified is looking for the win. He's going in. He's got the Baron. He's got the minions. Jump to the base. Jump to the Nexus Towers, because Unified is going to end the game. That is some Hong Kong attitude for you. Patton trying to stop him. Can he get Unified? It's the Unified carry battle. Cannot get the Nexus for him. Galio. Come Galio, Unified jumps in, oh! and Unified wins! And the Hong Kong attitude are going to take down Fenerbahce. The Nexus falls, and HKA take us to a tiebreaker. That was insane. There was so much buildup for just that moment, that decision to put Unified straight down the mid. The fact they had cracked the inhibitor earlier made all of the difference to get that advantage. Mid priority, baby! And how much is that going to play in the minds of HKA? They'll be incredibly overjoyed to take that win. They'll be incredibly overjoyed to have a chance to take the first seed in Group D. And Fenerbahce just unable to secure the Baron and got out-rotated by Unified and Rivers at the end. And HKA, that number one seed, they faltered in day one up against Fenerbahce. But they say, ah, oh, it was an upset. But we call it an upset because somebody else was supposed to win. And they're going to prove who is supposed to come out on top in that tiebreaker. And we, we still have more great games coming up today as well. It's Young Generation up against Fnatic next. Probably going to be a tiebreaker between KLG and Young Generation. We're looking at some great League of Legends for the day. Yeah, potentially two tiebreakers on okay. the board. One for that number one, number two spot, and then one to see who gets number two in that group with Fnatic if Fnatic walks away with the victory in the next game. I have to wait and see. Group D and Group C yet to be decided. Coming back off that game, you have to give credit to HKA because they played around their power spikes. They played with a lot of patience, and we're going to see... It, the analysts think they played as well as they could have done. I feel like you have something left to draft. say, I, mean. I was like, draft, 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 Tristana, range advantage over Sivir, and the last pick, Alistar, puts the Sivir in an awful position for the later parts of the game. I have to see if the analysts agree with you. To get their thoughts on how Hong Kong Attitude forced the tiebreaker, let's send it over to Dracos and the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Medic. Of course, backs against the wall, pressure is on, and Mark Z makes the right prediction. Careful, guys. Don't, don't bet against me. I'm going to <laughs> Vegas after this. All right, but ultimately, there's so much happened that game. So many back and forth, so much that we could talk about, but I think it's best to just look at this replay of the final fight brought to you by Acer Predator, because this steal, this finish was insane. The funniest thing is Rusty calling that Sindra's gonna steal this Baron right about now is when he called that out. Yeah, it's amazing how that happens. It's the second Syndra that we have seen steal a Baron in this tournament, and I believe it had a Gragas jungling with it. It's just the will of the gods, it seems, to and to HKA gonna get that win. And just to bring it back as we watch this Trishana end the game, that was Fenerbahce with the Syndra and the Gragas stealing the Baron from Hong Kong Attitude. I mean, so... to, to be fair, as we see uh, Unify close this game out off the back of the Galio support coming in, getting that little bit of damage reduction going in, going ham. Uh, Syndra's true damage on her W combined with her full combo potentials actually usually out damages Smite by a pretty large portion by the end of the game. So it's not entirely unbelievable that you lose the Smite in that situation. Uh, it's just 
just unfortunate that it happened. A mistake by HKA going bot lane gives up the Galio's life. Mm -hmm. Fenerbahce smell the weakness in the air. It's the only time that they're going to have to force that Baron. Amazingly, the series of events from a very passive game being a mistake of your own team and results in you winning the entire game because that then forces the proactive move out of Fenerbahce. It was this weird back and forth, but you see who came out. And this is so, so close. And now I want to take a step back to earlier in the tournament. We saw Direwolves pretty cleanly beat Team 1. Team 1 closely come back. And then when it came to the tiebreaker, Team 1 dominated. Are we setting up for something similar here? Are HKA just going to come back swinging and lock in this first seed in that tiebreaker? Looking at me because he's a Diawolves? I no, I, no, I, <laughs> I, would, no. I think it'll be close no matter what because both games were close. I don't think HKA comes out and just totally dumpsters them in the tiebreaker. I'm sure you'll see, you know, Fenerbahce going to find some way to fire back, maybe yeah. try some different things up. A lot of AD carry bans here, force that Sivir pick. Maybe they raise their priority on that one. Yeah, speaking about draft, I think the Sivir being forced was fantastic. We discussed that maybe Twitch was a better option, but ultimately they both have weaknesses, and Fenerbahce chose the team that had the Sivir to get rid of those laning weaknesses, yet still lost lanes. So that's probably the place you'd look at. I still agree with Mark in saying that the third time they meet each other should be a lot closer still. I think ultimately, too, the big thing that stood out to me was that in that clutch moment, Hong Kong Attitude made a very aggressive, very high-risk decision. And while that's not always going to be a positive thing and did count against them once or twice, they proved that in the late game, when it matters most, they can come up clutch. And in these deciding single games, essentially one more best of one decided, actually one more best of one, not essentially, uh, that's, that feels like so much important to me. It, it's still very scary though because there was a, another Baron attempt that happened around like the late 20 minute mark where they uh, got a pick off on the, the jungler again. They go into the Baron pit and they almost throw completely. And mm -hmm. it feels like this team's decision making around Baron, very, very suspect. And it's kind of like whoever does the Baron is very likely to throw. So I, I'm still a little hesitant but it does feel like HKA have the better early game, which gives them the, the control of the game as they move throughout it. And of course, the expectations coming into this with it, Fenerbahce could out team fight HK when it comes to getting through those laning phases, but it wasn't the case this time. And I think the Tristana is where we owe a lot of credit towards that. All right, before we get to that tiebreaker, we have one more game ahead of us. We got to step away, but when we return, Young Generation fight for their chance to promote to the elimination stage versus Fnatic. Meet us back here after the break in just three and a half.